All right, mud lovers, here we are on the river. Well, hey! <laughs> we hope. <laughs> river Wahey in Guildford and I'm with Nick and Tell and we're going to search the low watermark because upstream there's been a bit of an accident, a bit of a bridge collapse so loads of lovely foreshore has been exposed for us to go and search so let's go and get some luck in the muck there's no end. Sapphires. <laughs> <laughs> but you are a mud lover. I'm a mud lover, I love all this stuff. So we are here and we're going to explore the river way, aren't we? That's right, we've heard a rumour that the there's been an accident, the bridge has come down or something like that, and there's loads of exposed foreshore. And so we're gonna see what's left behind, hopefully there's a few treasures that we can get down to, a bit of accessible foreshore that's not been searched very often, very historic area, could be all sorts of fires, you never know. Yeah, so we are quite a long distance from the River Thames today. Well, this river is actually a tributary of the Thames. Is it? Yeah, it all feeds into the Thames, so what sets off here eventually does end up in the Thames, so it's kind of far on the Thames ish, just a very a bit further away. And if you just look up there, that's where they've had some sort of oh. problem. I'm going to investigate and have a little look. Okay, great. Well, uh, let's hope that we find some interesting bits and pieces. just made the first find of the day. What have you found, Terry? Park bench. A park a bench. A park bench there. Oh, yeah. Cast iron end. Get that in size car. <laughs> a lovely park bench. Yeah. Well, it certainly looks very scenic here, doesn't it? Now it's a case of finding some foreshore that's exposed to have a little search. Exactly. Yeah, we've just got to keep looking. I mean, there's all there's loads of different areas we can try, little uh, exposed areas. So we just got to see where we can all go together. I think there's enough room for three of us to get down there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, you can see a few bits and pieces of pottery and bottles here. So there must be something in there for us to find. You got in. <laughs> oh look, there's a bit of pottery down there. I can see. Yes, just a on it. Pick it up just first. there. There we go. Bit of willow place, isn't it? Yeah. That's a, it's got a little person on it, actually. There's a bottle base and a bottle neck there. Oh, They're not go. particularly old, are they? Well, that's that's a bit. Like, that's early. Okay. Yeah. yeah so um. The base there. Yeah. So well. there's potential, isn't there? Absolutely. So, yeah. What are you hoping to find today, Si? I'd like a ring. Gold. A ring. Yeah. Gold. And diamonds. Terry, what would you like? Uh, yeah, gold. Gold, gold, okay. Well, we're setting our sights nice and high then, aren't we? That's I'd like gold too. That's the top of that. Yeah, you can always come down from a busy height. <laughs> well, no, no, you've got to aim high. Yeah. Shoot for the moon and reach the stars. Well, the first find is an old shoe. Just sitting there. No great age to it, but a sign of good things to come. Look, there's no stopping them. And don't you think that Terry's just the chicest detectorist in the West over there with his hat on? Well, so sigh with his green hat on. So this is going to be our first little spot because it's on a little bit of a bend here and you can see how much the river's gone out so hopefully it's not too deep mud but it's a beautiful autumnal day and it's nice and warm as well because it's 
cold at the moment, generally, but today the sun's come out and so have the mudlarkers. So that's our first little stomping ground over there, see if we can find anything. We've got metal detectors, uh, Nick's going to go, well actually we've got two detectors, actually we've got three detectors, haven't we? Yeah, yeah we've got detector each so we'll give it a little go. Look at that, who knows what's in there. Nice easy step down as well. What is around that corner, I wonder? You gonna go in? <laughs> there they are, testing out the ground. No, that is a bit too deep for me. Getting stuck there, guys. Yeah. Oops, oops, do you need some help? Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, it's my yeah. duty to film this and document it. <laughs> this is too deep, unfortunately, it's too silted up. For insurance purposes. <laughs> exactly. We can't do this bit, so we have to move on. Soon, all we will see is a little green hat poking out of the mud. <laughs> Good job, it's a luminous green hat. You know exactly where it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shame, they look quite promising there for a bit. But... Okay, well, let's go around the corner, see what um, awaits us around there. <laughs> a little tiny bridge, look, and a seat. Ferry lane. No ferry running them all. Who knows? So I think we're going to have a look around here because usually the river um, level is a lot higher, so this isn't generally exposed. So I think Simon's going to be getting his detector out. And Terry too. Oh, I heard a little bleep over there. What's happening? There's something in this spade. I thought it might be a ring, but I think it might be a coin, but it's still... Oh, yeah. yes. It's a very crudded up. One penny. Okay, well, it's a good start, isn't it? Find a penny, pick it up all day long. Yeah, You'll it's have a penny. good luck. <laughs> all right, onwards and upwards. Yeah, let's go. Another shoe. So here is a 50B. I don't know what's doing so deep. That was quite that was quite deep that one. 2001 seal suspender. Well I just had this up. Little interesting little boxy steely object. Now does anybody know what that is? I mean, I do. I thought I'd let you have a chance to guess. Answer will be coming up later on. So how are you getting on there, Terry? Just iron. Tons and tons of iron. Scrap iron everywhere. Really? All I found is a mallet head. Oh no, so no good detecting here then, because it would no, just be too... Way too much iron here. Too irony. Yeah. It's it must have been just tipped down the hill. From wherever. And, uh, yeah. Right. Tons. Well, Simon's found a little. Yeah. Simon's found a little coin so far. Yeah, Is he? Two coins. Two coins. Oh, and a spoon. 50p. Oh, a fifty p. Oh, yeah. you're going up there. Be a pound coin next. So I just dug up what appears to be a coin. There we go. Let's go and have a quick look. And it's probably going to be a half penny. Still cool though. What's that? Yep, yeah, half penny. Looks like it says 1942. I mean, it'd probably be George the Sixth, I think, or George the Fifth. There we go. There's quite a few coins now. Oh, Terry's had something up. It's only a penny. It's only a penny. It's only a new penny, but a proper one, not an iron one. There we go. Excellent. 
Oh, what have you found now? You're not going to leave any coins for Terry and I to find at this rate. Well, it's weird because this one's just sitting under the surface. It was only like a half an inch thing. Really? And I thought it was a foreign coin at first because it's got a little bit of goldy sheen on it. Yeah. But it's actually a 1945 oh. sixpence. Hey, and that's in really nice condition as well. Yeah. What's the date on it? 45, 1945. 1945. Yeah, it's straight after the First World War. Yeah, it's a, well, it's a very appropriate thing as it's Remembrance Sunday today. That's true, yeah. George VI. I might be tempted to put that in a Christmas pudding because I'm not sure if it's tradition everywhere, but in England, sometimes we put sixpences inside the Christmas pudding and then the lucky person to break their tooth on it gets to keep the sixpence. So there we go. Hooray! You may put it in the Christmas pudding. Well, you'd do that as long as I can have some of the Christmas pudding. Well, with the sixpence in, you mean? Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll just bring my detector along. <laughs> Get your pinpointer in there. Yeah. Start stabbing up the cake. Exactly. Exactly. Let's do that. Look, there's a little uh, PE G 1868. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm going to have a little go at detecting now. I am going to go over by that bridge over there, and it looks like. Terry is also detecting himself up. Well, there's another coin. Tells that a hoard. Wishy washy. You got the same as me, mate, an old penny. Yeah. Cool, the light is bouncing beautifully off your head. <laughs> <laughs> green, yeah. very green. What age is that? Did you see? I can't see. I haven't got my glasses on, mate. Uh, is it Ricky? Yeah, it looks like a 86. 1886. Yeah, Vicky. Bunhead or Younghead. I can never remember which one's which. Bunhead has obviously got a bun in it. Nice one. And a couple of a little old half penny and a, oh, another penny. Yeah, just smalls. Sweet. Well, there's definitely coins coming up here, guys. So stay tuned. I reckon something even better is going to come up soon. I'm going to use your knee pad as a coin collector part. Oh yeah, I lost a knee pad. Look. One knee pad, no knee pad. It's become the coin holding cup. <laughs> so how are you guys getting on? Excellent. <laughs> Going out for a bag of crisps. <laughs> We're finding lots of modern coins anyway. Well, it certainly makes a change from the Thames, doesn't it? You see Nick's drawing quite the crowd down there of spectators. Well, I'm detecting using Simon's detector and I have got a little signal down here. So I'm going to see if I can find what it is. Right, there it is. It's just around here. So let's have a look, see what there is to find here. It may just be a big piece of metal. It'd be nice if it was a, a nice old coin, wouldn't it? Seems to be still in there. Let's go a little bit further down. Let's have a look under this stone. Oh, it is a, it's a coin, look. It is a coin. I wonder if it's modern. Ah, oh, it's a modern coin. But hey, it shows that my detecting skills are getting a bit better. It's a 10p piece. But I'm well pleased with that. Hooray! Right, come on then. Let's find something a little older. Well, guys, um, this has just come up. I'm not sure what it is, but it looks to me like it could be a bit silver. It's got this, like, the right hue about it. I'm not sure what it was. Give it a little, little rinse off. Let's see if I can bend it. Looks like it might be part of a pen. There we go, bent back to shape. Yeah, interesting little mark there. I can't see the sun's so bright today, I can't see the viewfinder. So this is coming in shot, but it looks like there might be a bit of silver. I need a bit of foil from somewhere to do a bit of a spit and foil test. So uh, there we go. Could be good.
So there's a signal down there. Got no idea what it is. But it's roughly there. Let's see what it is. There we go. Ooh, that's cool. It's a big old dandy button. Ah, a nice design on that actually. Pretty nice. It's got a star or something, I don't know if you can see that. Nice. In a nutshell, a dandy was a Georgian gentleman who paid particular importance to his appearance. A dandy could be a self-made man who strove to imitate an aristocratic lifestyle, despite coming from a middle-class background. They became a bit of a joke as they tried to impress more elaborately with big showy buckles and buttons to impress women and counterparts. This satirical scene shows a dandy blinding his love interest. Oh, there's great excitement over here. I, I am running along to see what the trendiest metal detectorist in the West has found. Sorry. It's not as old as he thought he was. Oh. No, it's not. It's fine, is it? 1993. <laughs> wow. That's quite old. <laughs> it's older than my two. Yeah. Mag Magyar Kostas. Kostas Sag. Uh, oh. Don't know. <laughs> there's quite a few modern coins around here, isn't there? It's good practice for me. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry Nick, but I'm going over where you've been and I'm finding coins. I'm not very good then, am I actually? It's probably I'm like Ukraine or something. Cool, come and look what I've Treasure. Okay. You know, we wish. Just coin, but it's Okay, Simon's found something, so it's obviously going to be really good. Well, I've got a signal, right, and I put the spade in and I've <gasps> pulled out something not metallic. Really? Yeah. Gosh. Okay. Let me, um, let me see this. Let's have see, a see look. See if you can see what's on that. On what? the end of the sp on the spade there. Look. <gasps> oh, it's a little jawbone, isn't it? It's a tiny little tooth. <laughs> look at that. Should oh, we uh, give it a little wash? Yeah. Oh, there we go. It's not a little... oh yeah, it's a little jawbone. Actually, I quite like those. If you don't want it, I'll look after it. For you. you can have it. Can That's I? fine. Yeah. Add it to my jawbone collection. You may have it. Yeah. Look at that. Look at those little tiny teeth. Do you think that's from a little tiny dog? Because it's too big for a rat. And it looks like a meaty. Must be a kitten. kitten. A kitten. Actually, that's quite a big kitten, isn't it? Maybe a cat. Maybe a cat then. Okay, well, well did that make a signal, did it? Nick, seriously, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I got a signal. Okay, you've gone back to beginner status, just saying that. <laughs> well, I got a signal when I took out the oh, spoil and it was on top of the spoil. It was on so top of the spoil. There might still be a... So there might still be something else in there then? Yeah, but it's not there, it's actually a... Uh, okay. It should be in there. Yeah, it is. is it a nail or oh, something? Oh, it could be. Oh, a nail. It's that. Oh, well. Mine's got a jawbone out of it. Yeah, it's not a nail, it's a bit of tube. Well, whilst I'm here, why don't you show me the rest of what you found so far? Well, that is a little silver thing. Oh, I think yes. there's a little, little oh, mark yeah. up there, it could be a hallmark. Yes. And that's a Georgian oh, that's, dandy button. Oh wow, that's really nice. That's, yeah, and you've got that's a, a really nice button. Yeah, there's something oh, on there a, as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's nice. I wish I'd found that. That's really pretty. It'll clean up quite well, I think. Yeah. It's got I like, like a star that. shape in the middle, isn't it? Yeah, that's fine of the day so far, as far as I'm concerned. Better than the jawbone. <laughs> Better than the jawbone, yeah. Oh, I do like that button. One heck of a big button. It isn't is. It? Well, the dandies loved to show off, didn't they? Mm. So that would have been a nice polished piece of brass back in its day. Very well done, Simon. So, yeah, 1750s, that sort of era, easily. Very well so, done. Yeah, happy with that. Sweet. What's a beautiful day here today? Gorgeous autumn day. Okay, so I got a signal, um, so I've started scraping around um, and I've just spotted something which isn't metal but it looks potentially yeah, it's not part interesting, of a flagon. doesn't it? It's got something canal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Canal? Uh, yeah, canal there. Something canal London. Ooh. So should we dig it out and see what it is? Yeah, go for it. 
Oh, yeah. Part of a... Yeah, oh, it's like the neck of a... Also, and it does, it's, it is broken, actually, but... Um, That's a nice bit of history. Yeah. I can stick that back together. So, T. Smith or something? Nice one. Yeah. Old Kent Road. Oh, there we go. Yeah, isn't that great? Because everyone knows I do love a good name that yeah. I can research. So there's T. Smith, something Canal, blah, blah, blah. Canal Restaurant, maybe? Old Kent Road, London. Lovely. So I'm happy with that. Very happy with that. Good and find. now I'm going to see if there's anything actually metal down there because I did get a signal. Um, so Excellent. I shall carry on and see what else is down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's still a... There's a strong signal there, actually, so... And maybe the flagon was full of gold coins. Yeah, I'll have a look and I'll call you back okay. if it's something interesting. Hope you don't. So, you saw this come up earlier. Any ideas what it is? Well, it is, in fact, an old harmonica. So someone's been down here playing the blues and he got thrown in or lost or fell out of pocket and ended up in the riverbed. Pretty cool. Just detected this little pruning plate. So let's give it a little wash in the stream. Cool. It's got something on that. I might make an attempt to print that when I get, oh there you go, Henry's. Hard to read text backwards. A little advertising plaque. Annoyingly Terry found the other half of this and threw it in the river. Well done, Tell. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm That's really all right, mate. That's all right. That's okay. We'll have one half of the clue. You throw the rest of the clue away. Never mind. I found a piece. You found a piece. There's more there. How far did you throw it? It's only been, it's only been in the shallow. I wouldn't have lobbed it. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, maybe we can find the other half. Tell, find the other half for me. <laughs> I love them. I love these printing presses. They're so cool. Trying to work out what it says. Lovely old uh, typography. N E U R N E U R A L The Oh, I can't, can't read it. I'm going to have to flip it. I'll take a photo and flip it and we can work out what it says. So I just got a signal just down here and discovered a bent fork, but it's quite a nice ornate bent fork. It's quite pretty. And it's got something on it, so probably the uh, where it was made here, yeah, Sheffield, I think. Well, just had that uh, bullet. Some sort of strange 303, but I'm not used to that kind of tip. And a two on the bottom. Looks like it's uh, it's got some markings on it there of a uh, broad arrow. There's another coin up, and it's a farting. Nineteen, what is it? Nineteen twenty-four, something like that. Nice condition, George V. Let's have another look at that date. Yep, nineteen. 1924, I think. So Simon found a bit of printing plate. Let's have a look. Oh, that's very nice. Look. This is leading up to have a go at Terry again. Isn't it? <laughs> did you find some printing plate, Terry? I might have done. <laughs> what did you do with it, Tell? I might have thrown it in there. Oh no! I didn't realise. This looks great. It's got Henry's on it, hasn't it? Henry something, and then underneath there. Yeah, I can't quite read it either. The bit I had said Henry the Eighth. It was his. It was his coin printing. <laughs> uh, I don't want that. <laughs> hey, that's very intriguing, isn't it? Is it interesting, Nick? Ah, it's intriguing <laughs> and interesting. <laughs> it's very interesting. 
Old and interesting. Is that one of them words that just keeps spilling out too often? Yeah, yeah I can't stop saying interesting, <laughs> I know. Well, I got so many comments afterwards, everyone said, it's okay, you can say interesting. So. Well, I'm going to actually print from that, because I've got some really cool old ink. Not old ink, but quink, have you heard of quink? Oh, I have heard print? of quink. Yeah, I've got some quinks, so I'm going to try and print it. At the very least, I'll be able to flip it around so we can see the uh, what it is. But it would be but nice to... Uh, I think really you should find the other half. I think you should find the other half, but... Uh, That's lovely. We'll all try and find That's it That's a really together. nice find. Come on, isn't it? Well, Terry's up to his knees now. Well, Nick's dragging us to the pub. She needs a drink, so she's saying, let's go to the pub. So Simon and Terry forced me to come to the pub. Yeah, forced. Under forced du yeah, forced under duress. Well. <laughs> and so here we are, looking at our finds. So I'm going to get my finds out in a minute. But here's a quick look. Mm. We're going to do a roundup shortly, but not quite yet. That's pretty good. I've been polishing them. Oh, you did actually get an older one there, did you? There's a 10p that one. Okay, yeah, I got a few tempers. Yes, the old Vicky penny. But That's nice. Now it's dried out, doesn't look so good. Look at you in your little hall. I know, I'm trying to hopefully get to a fiver. Mm. Oh, nice bit of printing plate there. That's cool, isn't it? <laughs> Can there isn't more of it. I know, if there's only more of it. <laughs> we didn't find the other bit in the end, so oh. must, Terry must have had a stronger throw on him than he, re than he realised. And uh, it'll be discovered one day. Well, I will get my things out and um, I'll be back later to do a little roundup. But first for a little beer and then we'll get on to the roundups. We should really be advertising um, Tim's Chris. We get a, bit of a few boxes sent to us. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> cheers, guys. Camden Town Brewery. Cheers. Yay. To you. <laughs> Thank you. Right, so let's do a little round up and see what has been found today. Let's start with Terry. Down there. Okay. Um, lots of two peas, a few half pennies, decimal half pennies, mm -hmm. um, a five p, a twenty p, or is it ten p? Ten p. Oh, that's a ten p. One of the old ten p's and three pennies. One of them's the iron base, which is pretty recent. Yeah. A foreign Johnny. Mm -hmm. Not sure what that is. Uh, that is a Vicky Penny. That's but nice. Is it a Victoria? Yes, but now it's dry. You can't really make out much on it. It was better when it was wet. Um, got a case of some sort. Oh, that I looks like know. it could be part of a buckle. Isn't it? Yeah, but it, yeah, it's got to be something to do with a buckle. And I think believe these are all to do with fishing weights, which is better out the river than in the river. Uh, yeah. And an air gun pellet. And you got your button as well. Oh yeah, little, um, um, and it looks like Clark from Guildford. It's always fun to find uh, <coughs> local, local local makers. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's pretty nice. And also, Terry has an Instagram account, don't you, Terry? I do. And what is your Instagram account it's name? Terry Old Guy. Terry Old Guy. I preferred the old name. I thought that it used to be Terry Old Git, didn't it? Yeah. Okay, so it's now Terry Old Guy. And do check out Terry's Instagram because he does have a very interesting Instagram site Thank with some much. great finds. Thanks, Thank Terry. Thank you. Right then, Sci Finds. Hello. Now to you. Yeah, well, I. Uh... <laughs> Let's have a look at your haul. Look at that. Been a fair, fair few bits. Five pound and four p in modern change. So. I broke the five pound barrier. Okay. So that'll buy half a pint where we are. <laughs> 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 um, these are the pre decimal, they're all half pennies, George V, George VI. And this is a nice little silver, 50%, oh, 1945, George VI, um, sixpence. That's nice, you're going to put that in your Christmas pudding, aren't you? That's right. <clears throat> Georgian button. It needs I a bit of a clean up. I might put electrolysis on this to get it nice and uh, shiny again because it's mm. not doing anything for me in this condition. 
So I think I might be able to clean that up. Yeah. Electrolysis. That is a that nice, one. nice button. Yeah. A real bit of silver, not just 50% silver, but I believe this is a real piece of silver. I'm not sure what it's from, but you can just see the edge of a hallmark there. Oh yeah. At the top. Could have been from a propelling pencil or something, because it's got like a kind of textured feel which yeah. you'd use to grip. Mm. So some sort of device, a handheld, I'm trying to think what else it could be, pin case or something like that. Mm -hmm. You never know, but that is silver. You could have it melted down to make something, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah, very, very thin ring, maybe. <laughs> yeah. um, and then another old coin, um, another George V. Lovely patina on there. Yeah, that is a nice patina, isn't it? Yep. Going to, going to these ones now, these are just a few bullets. I'm not sure what these are. They're all the same type. Mm, um, they look like 303s, don't they? They do. They are. Yeah, they are some kind of 303, but I'll just have to double check. They might be a bit earlier, these ones. Yeah, or, uh, I think they are because they're quite unusual shape. The, the bullet part is quite unusual shape. Yeah, but I'll have a look at the bases and send you a picture of the base and we can they just... Might be, they might be dated on the base. Oh. Yeah, there is some markings and I saw a broad arrow briefly in the sunlight. So okay. I think if I clean one up, I'll send you a picture of the base and you can, okay. you can work out through yeah. your... You've got a chart, haven't you? I do. The different things, so we can use your chart to ID that. So that's cool. And now, Nick, do you know what that is? That looks like a mouth organ. Yeah, harmonica. Is it a mouth? Is it a harmonica? It is, yeah. 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 We, we find sometimes just the reed bit, the bit with the, is, because these the lines, slots. yeah, these slots go from <clears throat> long to quite small. Yeah. Depending, and you know, oh, that dictates nice. the sound. So higher notes, low notes, or whatever. Cool. Around, so there's that. Very but nice. My find, find du jour. Yeah, I love this find. Look at that. Is the, uh, is the printed plate, <laughs> half of the printed plate. I'll wait over here. But we've actually found what it is already. And it is Henry's. Hold on. Henry's Nervine or neuralgic. Is that how you say it? Neuralgic. Neuralgic <laughs> imbrication. And so this side we've got here is the agony. Yeah, there's a man sitting on a chair there in agony by the looks of it. And then on the other side, which Terry threw back into the river, <laughs> would have been allegedly the cure. So maybe we'll have to come back in a few months' time when the water level is really low. I reckon we should come back and have another look and see if we can find the other half of it. So stay tuned and see if we come back and find the other half. That's or a not. great find, though, isn't it? Yeah, very, very well good. Done, no, I'm, well I'm done, Simon. Well done. Really happy with that. What else yeah. have we got then? Well, that's pretty much that's it. That's pretty I think. much it. Yeah. Got a uh, just a few lead weights, mm -hmm. maybe another button there, but yeah, okay. that is me lot. Very good. Not bad at all. I also found quite a few modern coins. What I did find though is that it was very good practice for detecting mm. finding all these coins. I got a large 10p and a small 10p and lots of 2p's and an old pound coin. Um, I found this lid from something or other and I'm sort of really rather hoping that there may be some kind of engraving on it but I, I I've got to be honest I don't think there is but who knows I'm gonna have a look anyway cool I shall clean that off at home and here's my fragment of uh, flagon and on it is T Smith potteries from Old Kent Road London so um, I'm gonna enjoy looking up T Smith although I'm sure there's plenty of them but I don't expect they all had potteries great I had a great day really enjoyed it so thanks for bringing me along you're welcome well I, I think we should come back and do it all over again hopefully when there's a little bit more foreshore left because I reckon there's more to come out okay so this is a bonus bit of footage on how I clean my fires this is the button you saw in the video dandy button probably mid to late 18th century so what I plan to do is use electrolysis to clean this up and a little bit of fiberglass pen um, let's show you how I do it and what you can see there is my very grubby electrolysis kit um, it's been used quite a number of times but it's all it's pretty basic it's a, an old phone charger attached to a crocodile clip and a big spoon a stainless steel spoon um, and what I've done is I've drilled a hole through the stainless steel and that's that's an old one there look that's just an old bit of um, wire that's, they do they do wear, wear away after a while uh, this is basically the positive uh, that goes on to a spoon tie it down just because it keeps coming off it's quite frustrating like that and the other end is attached to a crocodile clip uh, the idea about that is you put your reddick coin or whatever on that and that gets a bit rusty as well 
So um, there's a short lifespan on these things, so you have to keep repairing them and putting them back together. Uh, that's just a little clip to hold it to the side of the pot. Um, in the pot, we're gonna put warm water and salt and a little bit of lemon juice just to get things moving. Um, and this will be attached to the crocodile clip. The other end, the spoon will be in there right next to it. We'll turn it on and watch it fizz away. Like I said, this is just an old phone charger, very low wattage thing, so you never get electric shock out of them. This is an old Samsung jobby. Um, seems to work great, so any old phone charger can be converted. Just snip the ends off um, and attach your negative and positive. The colour's there, copy that and you'll, uh, you can't go wrong. Again, I've just uh, had to take that around the end because they do tend to just fray off and slip when you're doing this. So yeah, let's get going. Here's my hot water. A couple of teaspoons of salt. There we do. Jamie Oliver style. Don't measure it, just throw it in. So they dissolve a little bit. You don't have to put lemon juice in, um, but it just makes it taste better. I'm joking, it just helps with the reaction a little bit. So that's cool. Plug it in, plug it in. Okay, that is now live. Nothing's happening, I'm just gonna dissolve this a little bit more. Lovely jubbly. So you can see there, my red lead is attached to my spoon in the water. And my crocodile clip is gonna grab hold of the coin. Nicely grip that. Nice and gently, in it goes. Get it nice and wet. And I can use this uh, little clip here. Oh. Just to hang it off the top there, just to stop it from sinking too much. You see it fizzing there on the left hand side, and it will do that. I tend to pick it up and rotate it so that it doesn't burn at any particular point more than the other. See, it's fizzing away nicely and all the crud is just coming off it there on the right you can just see there and just put its flake off and again a few seconds and I'll turn it around see the color of the water slightly changing these spoons they uh, end up being really quite corroded like they've been dipped in acid after you've done about 100 coins it's really quite bizarre how these things just deteriorate in front of your eyes. Anyway, look, that's probably going now. Not sure if you can see all the uh, crud coming off it. Yep, the water's really starting to get green. All that gunk is coming off, so that means it's working well. What I might do now is give it a wash just to help it along a little bit. And already, that's looking, good. That's looking better. And um, we can see the details coming through a bit more. Oh, then it's a little bit longer. Then we use a fiberglass glass pen. What I might do in this occasion is change the water. I don't usually bother, but just because you can't really see it now because the water's getting so black. I wouldn't recommend doing this on anything that you think is valuable. Uh, just because if you overdo it, you can actually ruin the artifact. Tin coins especially are extremely hard to clean using this method. However, if it's a common coin, just try it, give it a go. And uh, if, it's, if it's a very common coin, then it doesn't matter if you if you bugger it up a little bit, but it's each to their own. It's your coin, you can do what you want with it. And it's a bit of fun as well, seeing them clean, clean up this way. It's cooking quite nicely now. I think that's pretty much there for the first go with a fiberglass pen. So this is a fiberglass pen. You get them from eBay, not a lot of money. 10 quid for a pack of three, I think. Um, you can just get refills as well. So rather than buying the whole thing, you just get refills. And uh, yeah, they're great. They're, they're, they're made of fiberglass, uh, the tips. And they're great for getting coins clean. I'm gonna take you outside to do this bit because uh, the light's better out here. But here we go, fiberglass pen. So this is my favourite bit, this bit reveals the best, you can really see that star shape coming through now. 
It's good to have a little bit of water. Luckily there's some water on this table. Hmm. Water just helps it along a little bit, I've found. When this thing wears down, you just twist that and get a little bit more out. So there we go, I've just cleaned that under the tap. And look how much detail has come out, and that's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do now, you can see there's a green lump there, I'm going to put that in electrolysis again. And just keep going until that bit comes away. And then because these were dandy buttons, these would be really shiny buttons on the coats of dandy gentlemen in the Georgian times. I'm actually going to try and polish this up uh, with a new bit of polish that I've got. And I'm also going to polish up that sixpence with it to get it to like a really nice, almost like a mirror shine hopefully. If it'll work, I don't know, I'm experimenting. So uh, yeah, I'll get that polished up and show you that process as well. So now I'm going to use my multi-tool to do a bit of polishing on those two items. I bought this from Amazon, it's really good actually. It's a 300 piece uh, tool kit and it's got so many different attachments in there. Um, it's really cool, so if you want to buy that, look at the link below. It's really handy for cleaning and doing all sorts of stuff and uh, probably the best value for money one I found on Amazon, so check it out. All different types of uh, attachments to get you going, cleaning and doing whatever you want, sanding, all sorts of stuff, model making, yeah it's really good. So let's get busy cleaning these two things. I'll be using this little polisher with some of this which is mag and aluminium polish so that's really cool that'll um, get it to a really nice shine. My mate Chris told me about this from Addicted to Bleep, so thanks very much for that mate. And if you want to buy that, there's a link in the description below. Let's see how it performs on these two items. So this coin is pretty clean already. It's be interesting to see how it does clean up. So I'm just going to get a bit of polish. I think the best way of doing this is to rub a little bit on first onto here and then polish it in. Oh, look at that. We have the excess. Oh, shiny. Yeah, that was really cool. Look at the other side. See, it's a little bit duller. His earlobe's really sticking out, isn't it? Anyway, let's do the other side just for fun. Again, don't do this on anything that's really valuable because you might make it less valuable. You can see how clean that's come up, but it's almost like mirror like, really cool. Although, again, I'm not, I don't really like my coins really clean, I like them with patina on generally, but this is just a bit fun on this old sixpence. Not a particularly valuable coin, so it doesn't really matter if, uh, if, if I ruined it or whatever. So, but it's still nice to just have a play around and see what we can get these coins to look like. Okay, that'll do for that. That's just a quick uh, test. That's going to now I'm going to try the old dandy button. Here it is. I don't know how this is going to turn out, but this would have originally been probably gilded, so gold looking. So next on the list is to try and print this lovely bit of old printing block and you can see there quite clearly got the word Henry at the top, a neuralgic emulsion and the agony and then the person there 
in agony. So let's see if we can get a little bit of uh, joy out of this printing plate. I'm going to use some watercolour, it comes in these sort of tubes. Uh, I'm going to paint it on and see if it will print. Probably needs to be pretty quick before it dries. So uh, I'm just going to slap it on with a brush and try and print it. I can't really think of another way of doing it because it would have been probably done by a roller back in the day. So I'm not sure how much to put on. It'll probably come out completely crap, but this is the first time this will be printed in probably over 100 and let's say 120 years. So I'll put a light coat on there. Okay. Push it down. There we go. Not too bad. Definitely see the words come out there. <laughs> Bit of fun anyway. Um, obviously we can see what the original looked like, but that was still a fun little experiment. I might have another couple of goes and see if I can get something a little bit better with the detail with the detail in the face. Hmm. My cat. I'm doing this by the sink, but pretty thirsty. Put a drink on the floor. We're licking a spoon in the sink. I might have a couple of extra goes to see if I can get a bit of better detail in the face. So it just occurs to me, they might actually put the paper on top and then put pressure on that. So I'm just gonna try it that way around just to see if uh, anything anything works. So you're literally gonna, you're gonna put the paint on and then press onto it, the paper onto the uh, thing. See if that makes any difference. Here we go. There we go, that's probably the best one yet. I thought I'd moved it underneath the thing, but I still can't make out of that face, but uh, still a pretty good result considering it's been in the, uh, the river for a hundred years. I could keep doing this all day till I get it perfect, but um, <laughs> not bad. one. Definitely see the chair now. There we go. That is probably the best I'm going to get. I'm really happy with that. You can just make out the face and the little um, cloth around his head. I think his head was obviously his jaw hurt or something, toothache perhaps. And they wrapped ice around his head, but I think that's as good as it's going to get. Might even put it on a t shirt. Who knows? Alright, mud lovers, I hope you enjoyed that. All the products that I've used during that cleanup will be in the link below. You can, you can get them from Amazon, so feel free to have a go. Also need to tell you about my new Patreon page. It's really exciting actually. I'm going to be posting all sorts of photos, a bit of footage, maybe outtakes, uh, things that I'm getting up to, out and about on that Patreon page. And in return, it's just a way for you to help support me make more content. A lot of YouTubers do it. Uh, just a way of earning a little bit more revenue at the moment because YouTube is taking a bit of a dive. Uh, so hopefully you can help uh, support what I do. Um, go there, check it out. If it's something you want to do, I'll be really, uh, really grateful uh, to have you on board. If not, don't worry about it. I'll still be putting out uh, videos every Sunday where possible uh, for the foreseeable future. So even if you don't become a Patreon, don't worry, you won't be missing out on anything. Just if you like a little bit of inside scoop, a little bit, little bit of behind the scenes action and what I get up to, including any fails and things like that, come along and uh, see what I get up to on a, on a daily or weekly basis. So hope to see you there and I'll see you in the next adventure. Stay safe, my lovers.